Good morning, Pastor Rusty. Some inspirational thoughts for today. Well, thinking about the rich young ruler this morning, I came to notice that, you know, if you read the Synoptic Gospels, all three have this story in it that Jesus tells. And he tells a very interesting, hard teaching at the end of it. He says it's, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for the rich to enter into heaven. So you think about that. Well, no matter what, how you look at that, you know, whether there was an actually a little small gate that only people could fit through and camels could only go through on their knee completely unladen or a real needle. Um, think about getting a camel through a needle. And uh, probably the second is probably more true because as soon as Jesus told this, everybody says, well, if this is the case, then who possibly can make it into heaven? And Jesus said, you know, it's impossible with man, but all things are possible with God. So it's a pretty impossible task that Jesus was using to describe. And it was a common metaphor used in that day anyway. The Persians used it. It's easier for an elephant to go through the eye of a needle. Let's lay that aside, though, and think about it for a minute. The rich young ruler comes to Jesus, and he says, that, you know, he's probably one of the ruling class, religious ruling class, and probably had lots of wealth. And, and he's dealing with unfulfillment in his life. He knows he's not where he needs to be, but he's come to the teacher, and he says, good teacher. And Jesus says, well, there's no, none good but God. Why do you call me good? And he says, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? What must I do to inherit heaven? And Jesus says, well, you know the scripture. You know the law. Keep them. He said, which ones? And Jesus told him several, you know. And he says, well, I've done all this from my youth. What do I still lack? We know that he said this by what Matthew says. Matthew, he asked, what do I still lack? But then in the other synoptics, Jesus says, but you lack one thing. So carrying on the conversation he was unfulfilled he knew he wasn't where he needed to be something was keeping him from that place of assurance and fulfillment this is an interesting thing because jesus says well let go of all that you have let go of it all sell all you have give it to the poor and you'll have reward in heaven then come follow me and he went away very sad because he had many things you think about what jesus is teaching here jesus is teaching him the things that you're holding on to, that thing that gives you value or that thing that you're you're doing that you think is, is where I need to be is what's actually keeping you from true fulfillment. You, you won't let go of the one and go after the other. And think about like the Oregon Trail. Think about, you know, 250,000 settlers headed out on the Oregon Trail. About 80,000 actually made their destinations. A bunch of them veered off and went different directions. But, but they just didn't make it to their destination. They let go before they got there. Something stopped them for whatever reason. And we see that in our own life and in, in, in the things that we seek after. You know, if we want a closer walk with God, well, what is that thing that, that keeps us from getting up and, and, and reading our Bibles or, or taking a break during the day to read our Bibles or, or even to, to be a part of a worship service in a congregation? What are those things that keep us from, well, you know, I got this going on, I got that going on, I got a lot going on with my kids right now. I've had several people throughout the years tell me, you know, when, when I get my kids through school and, and, and all the ball and the gymnastics and the dance and all the other things that are going on, you know, then we're going to lock it down. And, you know, in our retirement years, we're going to really serve the Lord and be dedicated to the church. And, and Jesus basically says, these are the things that keep you from fulfillment. These things. Let go of what's holding you back. Is it prestige? Is it, is it you know, fortune? What, it, what are the things that you think about in your own life? What's stopping you? What is the thing you won't let go of because it's too dear to you to let go and follow Jesus? When we think about, well, I'm a born-again believer. I've got this taken care of. My life has been secured in Christ by the power of God. Well, that's a wonderful thing, but are you fulfilled? Are you fulfilled in where you're at? Now, the, the church answer is yes, but the truth is a lot of people aren't living a fulfilled life. They... They can dot all the I's and cross all the T's and they know all the Sunday school answers, but their life is still miserable. What's that thing you won't let go of? Maybe you have your identity wrapped up in. You just simply won't turn loose. You don't know how hard I worked for this, or you don't know the struggles I had to get where I'm at today. But where you're at today is not fulfilling to you. It's not where you thought it was going to be. How many people have sought after wealth just to say there's no warmth in wealth? There's no fulfillment in wealth. How many people have sought after prestige or titles or degrees? And when they get there, they just, well, they're no different. They're still the same person that's missing something in their life. And Jesus says, let go of all of that and grab a hold of me. Come after me. Walk the path our master walked. And that's more than just putting on sandals and finding some dirt road to walk down and hold your hands in front of you and 
Chant home. It's about investing in people and investing in the search and pursuit of God and His ways. There's where true fulfillment lies. And I think so many people miss it because they simply won't let go. And like Jesus said, how hard is it for those that have wealth or something they hold on to to make it into the kingdom of God? Well, I hope today you realize that you can let go of things that are holding you back and you can reach and strive for Christ and grow in the knowledge of Him and exemplify Him in all of your life. Try that out. You'll see a big difference. I'm Pastor Rusty, and I'll talk to you later.